Okay, so let's start. Um, Ada told me I have 20 minutes. I tried to be in time, so that's why I set my clock. So in case um, I'm running, I'm running over the time. Um, I get a reminder. So um, <clears throat> thanks for for being here, and um, I'm really pleased and happy to to do this presentation today for you. And I want to talk a little bit about multi-channel tracking, customer journey, and how you can use it to improve um, your, your online business, actually. So let me give you a short overview about IntelliAd first. We are a German technology uh, company provider. And uh, so if I should talk too fast or if you don't understand, just if you want to raise your hand and, and I try to, to be slower or just um, that you can understand it in a better way. But so we are about 90 people and we're based in Munich in Germany. And um, we started with bit management for Google actually in 2007. And um, so because many people wanted to improve their, their Google online accounts. And as you can see, we're managing by now through agencies and also direct client about 38,000 Google accounts. And um, <clears throat> which agencies and direct clients use to improve the performance of their accounts, actually. So, and also with the, with the multi-channel tracking, we measure, as you can see, 38,000, um, excuse me, 250 million clicks and conversions per month. So, we have a lot of clients that really want to track the user journey and see how the different channels um, play into each other and are combined with each other and have to do with each other. Um, since one and a half years or almost two years, we belong to the Deutsche Post. And um, so um, we have a big mother now with a lot of money behind us where we can really go into the European expansion. And this is also why, that, why I'm here for. Actually, we are really interested in the Turkish market because it's a really growing market and for us it's a really interesting market. So, and also um, down there you see something about um, ISO uh, certificate which is about data security. Um, in Germany, people are really um, yes, concerned about who is taking care of their data and who is in charge of the data. So this is really an, an important issue for, for Germany. But now enough about IntelliAd. Uh, actually, so I'm one of the founders of IntelliAd, and um, I'm in charge for marketing and sales. And, but I'm happy to talk with you about the, the whole multi-channel uh, theme. So as you can see, we as IntelliAd see ourselves in, um, in the center of the data. So we have API connections to all the different marketplaces so that you as an advertiser can have all the data from the different marketplaces within one tool and make it more visible. And um, so as I said, we are serving many agencies, yeah, like um, I think you have also here like Quizma from Group M or iProspect or uh, ad agents are starting here in Turkey, as I heard. And one of our big partners here in, in Turkey is going to be Metrix34. So um, they will help us to, to ramp up the, um, the business here. And they are here also to, to really um, help you improving, improving your online marketing stuff. So, but let me get into the topic. So now we have, or in the past years, also when we started in Germany, we had the situation that all the different channels were really isolated. Every, everybody was doing his own thing. The SEA manager was doing their AdWords campaign, the affiliate manager was doing affiliate, and so on and so on. And everybody just looked like in a silo only at, at his own topic. But in fact, you know, the, the real world is more complex. It's just everything plays into each other and influences each other. So this is where we example, um, Later on, I will show you like a case study from one of our big travel clients. And this is also the data from one of those clients. And <clears throat> as you can see, and this is just uh, where everything interacts with each other, and what we could see is over 30% of the conversions are influenced by several channels. So this is really important to understand. And if you can see here, like with this data that we had, like it was more than a million clicks, 7% of all conversion were initiated in PPC, so in, in the SEA channel, 
and end it, for example, in the SEO channel. So this is just, this is, and it's, it's different with each client. You cannot say that every client or every customer behaves in the same way. So it's very important to track the different channels and to track the traffic that, you, that you're gathering through the different online marketing activities. Uh, as you can see, 6% of the conversion were initiated in Facebook, for example, yeah, and ended in SEO. So we can see also that there are some channels that are more at the beginning of a customer journey of the chain, and some channels might be more at the end. But this is also very customer specific. Also, another, another really, really important topic is time. So if we just look at the, um, for example, here uh, at the travel client, if you look at flights, you might have very different conversion times. For example, if I look for a short distance flight from, let's say, Istanbul to Izmir, it might be more a business trip. And usually, let's say, the conversion will take place within seven to ten days. But if I look, for example, from, let's say, Istanbul to Bangkok, this might be more a trip about uh, holiday. And so, like for those kind of trips, the decision phase is much longer. It might be even 30 to 40 days. So, and this is also really important to take into consideration, you know, what kind of conversions do you have and um, how long do the conversions take and how do they interact with each other within, you know, within that period of time. So this is also important to uh, when you do the settings for your, uh, for your cookie lifetime, for example. Yeah? So, and this is, um, this is something what we can see also with different clients. We have clients that are selling, for example, furniture, high-end furniture and, and um, designer goods. And so the decision phase is, is, more, uh, is longer than with, um, with normal goods, let's put it this way. So you always have to, you have to look at the customer and you have to look at the, at, the, um, yeah, at the certain specifics of that shop or, you know, of that advertiser. This is just an example of a, of a customer journey and um, it's going to show you that in, normally in the beginning you have, you arouse more, um, uh, how do you say, you arouse more, um, um, I'm, just, I'm just missing the word actually, my English is getting bad. Um, awareness, you're arousing more awareness with branding. And the more specific the needs of the advertiser or of the user it gets, yeah, the more detailed um, he goes into search, for example. So you can easily, you can easily see um, that there are different channels involved in a customer journey. And you can also see, we did, for example, um, uh, O2 is a, is a real big telecommunication provider in Germany. So we're doing the whole multi-channel tracking for them. And for example, they were interested to see, okay, we, we have two major products. One, we want to sell contracts, yes, for, um, uh, for mobile phones, for example. And the other thing is they have an online shop where you can also purchase mobile phones. But they wanted to see, are there different customer journeys within, you know, looking at those two different areas. And they are, and they definitely are. If you, if you look at that, and then you can, after that, you can decide, you know, which kind of measures do you want to take? Do you want to do more branding? Or do you want to go more into the performance area? But in the end, you really should measure all the different, all the different channels, uh, like display, social media, PPC, price comparison engines. Uh, we can also do phone, and um, so also like the direct traffic on the, on the site itself where people just come directly to the website. And <clears throat> so the multi-channel tracking really measures all the clicks of all the channels and also the views, especially from the display area. So where you get a better connection between all the different channels. Um, let me take another example. The, on the left-hand side, this is our director of sales in Germany, and he's a passionate di uh, diver. And so if he, if he dives yeah, and he's looking for equipment for diving, um, he just goes into Google and types in, types in a, a search term, and then he might find a shop 
and he does an SEO click yeah, um, and goes to the shop, but he doesn't buy. Maybe five days later, um, he, sees, he sees a banner from that shop and then he clicks again and goes on the website. Uh, but still he doesn't buy, for whatever reason. And um, then he says, okay, I want, to, I want to go to a price comparison engine and, and really see you know, how the articles differ in, in the price uh, to make the decision. And then finally he remembers the shop, goes into the shop directly, and then he purchases. So this might be a typical um, user journey. But the many user journeys, um, they really differ from each other. And in the end, what's also important is maybe you have an average conversion rate of only 1%. So 99% of your customer journeys, most people don't take into consideration. But you actually should. Um, because there are some, there are some um, data within those customer journeys that you might not take into consideration, which can be really helpful for the decision later on for you. So, um, just looking at the e-commerce market, unfortunately I was looking for, for Turkish numbers. Um, the last one I could find is that in 2012, for example, only 4% of the internet users used online shopping. So, but you are, how many, 72 million people? And so, and, and, and Turkey is really growing so at, at, in, in, the internet, in the internet business. So I think if you look at all the different European countries here, there is so much potential uh, within Turkey and within the market that um, there is an estimation that within a short time of period, at least like 25% of the Turkish um, online community will do online shopping. So there is a huge potential for each of you as advertisers um, that you can that you can really gather or and, and, and really uh, get together within the next couple of years and that's why we think Turkey is such an interesting market um, yeah for example um, so if if you look at the last numbers so you're pretty pretty close to Bulgaria or Romania but I think Turkey is much more developed and I think within in, 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 in the time now you're probably within the last year you're probably more uh, in the area um, around like Italy. Yeah? Um, Mr. Berlusconi stopped more or less within the last couple of years uh, that there was any uh, internet trading in, in, uh, in Italy uh, because he was very interested to, uh, to do his media stuff in front like TV or print. Um, but as you can see there is a lot of potential and for example the highest one is United Kingdom and uh, Germany with 55% is also pretty good. Um, let, me, let me go into, um, like I showed you some data of that one client, and this is um, the client, it's called VEC.de, it's one of the biggest travel portals in Germany, um, uh, comparable like with Expedia or Opodo. And um, so the, for them it was really important to understand, you know, how the different online marketing channels interact with each other, and where, where should they put their money in the best way? And how, how should they do it, actually? So uh, we've been working with them together since uh, 2010. And they started, for example, with um, setting up the bit management for their Google accounts, because um, search was for them the biggest channel where they put most money into. So they said, OK, it really makes sense to look at the search channel and optimize the search channel and um, get more efficiency out of that search channel. So they started with bit management. After doing that, they, they said, okay, we also want to understand uh, how the other channels like display, affiliate, email marketing, how they work. Also, they started last year with uh, TV tracking or with uh, TV commercials that they have never done before. And they also wanted to see the impact from, from the TV um, commercials on, on the sales on their website. And this is really interesting for somebody who has hardly done any offline um, marketing activities, because when you, when you do uh, TV uh, commercials, you really can see within like a time of 10 to 15 minutes, um, a real high impact on your website 
where traffic comes through search, like um, SEA or SEO, or direct traffic. Because the, the habits of the people has changed drastically. Now everybody's sitting at home in front of the TV, but has like a uh, tablet in front of him. So people surf directly or often directly when they see an advertisement, which is interesting for them. So this is something where they said, okay, we want to, we want to get a better understanding of how the different channels interact with each other and, and come together. And um, <clears throat> so they have like more than 300,000 euros that they spend per month and like 1.2 million clicks yeah, that, we, that we measure for them. So it's a pretty big advertiser actually. And um, also what they're doing is using a pixel carrier because in Germany the affiliate marketing is pretty big. I think in Turkey it's not quite as big. But this is something where we have different affiliate networks where it's important for them to say, okay, which of the affiliate networks do we give the provision, do we give the money to? Um, so the challenge is just, you know, to really reach the, all the customers in the different channels and with all the different, you know, all the different channels that they're using. And um, also what we did is looking at different models. How, how to rate the importance of the different channels. Um, because traditionally, uh, maybe you still use it or everybody uses it, it is like the less click wins. So the less contact where the um, conversion happens gets 100% of the awareness, or let's say gets 100% of the attribution. But is this the right model? Okay, attribution modeling is always you try to get as close as possible to reality. You will never, you will never cover it 100%, but you shoot it in a way that it's, you know, yeah, like the best possible way at least. So um, <clears throat> there, there is a other model like the first click wins model, um, which is also, uh, let's say, very one-sided. Uh, it, it doesn't really show or it doesn't really uh, mirror the the um, the true the true picture. And what we actually did is these are two different models, and we looked at the different models. We took the same data. And we took like the first click wins, the last click wins, the um, equal distribution, and also the so-called bathtub, where you say, okay, the first contact gets a little bit higher rated, and the last contact also gets a little bit higher rated, but all the other contacts in between also get a portion. So we looked at the different models, took the same data, and rated all with the same with those different models, and actually decided that, for example, the bathtub, in this case, was the model of the choice, where everybody was happy saying, okay, this um, mirrors the, the, the true picture in the best possible way right now. So I have two more minutes. And um, <clears throat> so um, the, the thing is that actually, Vec.de was really, really happy with, uh, with the way that they could look at the data now because they got a better understanding of the data when they looked at the data with those different models. And it, about the attribution modeling, it's just about to understand the data in a better way and to give you much more security about the decisions that you make, how to put your budgets in the different channels. It's... Um, and of course, you should review that after a couple of months, yeah, maybe three months, six months, whatever. But at least during this period of time, it gives you much more security. And this is what we always hear from the marketing managers, because they just get a brighter and better picture of all the data, because you can collect so much data, but it's really difficult to understand the data. This is a, this is a big challenge. And um, so we could we could measure now every individual user which came onto the website from vec.de or th for the clients through the different through the different channels so this is this is a treasure a lot of data that you can really use and where you can really learn from and really make better decisions to improve um, your online marketing and uh, just let me jump over this I think this is, um, this is what I said. 
you just implement your, your different, um, the multi-channel tracking, you see how the different online marketing activities, how they work, and then you put the attribution model over it and look at the different data and then you judge it and then you make the adjustment how you want to, how you want to place your budgets within the different areas. But um, as the time is running out, but this is as you can see, if you look at the different attribution models, you see less click win and, and the best hub model, that you get a different rating for the different channels. So, and then you have to take the decision, what is the best for you? And what, um, it's, a, it's a matter of philosophy as well. You just have to be clear and you just have to be assured that this is the way how you want to rate the different channels with the, with the different attribution models. So, um, this, is the, this is the last chart. And due to the results, or due to the multi-channel tracking, we really could, or VEC.TE, could improve their ROI uh, by 140-40%, and which is really, I think, a really, really good number. And um, we had like a conversion rate boost of 28% in regards of the combination with the bit management, for example. And um, also with the affiliate, with the, with the uh, pixel carrier, we could just decrease um, the payments for the affiliate, or we could ma uh, make more, um, uh, how do you say, um, yeah, just better for the affiliates, actually, um, because it, it, um, yeah, there, were, there was more justice behind it. So um, I hope um, it was helpful for you and, and useful and, and informative. And um, like I said before, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions and talk to you um, in the lunch break or in the coffee break. So I'll be out there and um, looking forward to talk to you. Thank you very much um, for your patience and for your uh, listening to me. Thanks.